Hey everybody, thanks for joining today's Untop Live about the characterization of Osseo integrative structures using custom blocks. My name is Christopher Cho, Senior Application Engineer and Medical Device Guy at Entopology, and today's session is one of a few Entop Lives that dives deeper into leveraging a collection of custom blocks meant specifically for generating Osseo integrative structures. Uh, for those of you not too familiar with custom blocks, a good way to think about them is to consider them as compartmentalized and compact version of a set of blocks. Custom blocks have a variety of functionalities, but one of their most common uses is to take a handful of complex or non-intuitive blocks and combine them in such a way so that all the complexity is hidden and only what is important becomes available to the user. The biggest benefit this provides is the ability to take a really long or complicated workflow that would normally use a lot of blocks and condense it down to just one or two. The download link below will give you access to a collection of over 40 custom blocks designed specifically for generating and analyzing osseo integrative structures. I have taken the extensive design workflow starting from CAD part and ending with mesh export and segmented the design process into a handful of blocks that can be easily implemented in a modular way, giving you the freedom to use only what you feel is necessary for your design workflow. Today's focus is on the lattice structure analysis aspect of this Osseo Integrative Structures Toolkit, and to be specific, the blocks we are looking at will impact lattices after they have been thickened. So in this file, I have a few cubes of different sizes already created, and for each of these cubes, I have a randomized lattice structure generated within each of these cubic volumes. So 5 to 5, 10 to 10, 25 to 25, and 50 to 50. Now each of these lattices only differ in the volume in which they fill, but they share the exact same input parameters of beam thickness and target pore size. I would also note that these lattices all share the same randomization seed value, but realistically that doesn't matter here because the same seed value applied to a different volume will yield an entirely different variation in result anyway. Regardless, the two characterizations we are looking to explore here are relative density, and the surface area to volume ratio. Now within the ASU Integrative Structures Toolkit, I have provided these two blocks ready for immediate use and leveraging them is actually quite simple. For the relative density, we are simply looking to drop in the lattice we wish to measure and the reference geometry to measure it against. In almost all cases, this will simply be the lattice design region we initially filled. For the surface area to volume ratio, all that's required is the lattice itself. What is happening under the hood for this custom block is that the surface area of the lattice structure and the volume of the lattice structure are being calculated separately, and the ratio between these two values is what is being displayed. As we read through the values across the varying sizes of cubes, we can see that these values do slightly trend in a certain direction, but do so seemingly asymptotically. This means that the values we would expect to see if we were to fill larger and larger cubes is going to be very similar to the values that we already see here. So we can presume that the values on hand are fairly accurate numerical characterizations of this lattice structure, regardless of the size of the volume you're trying to fill. Now, a user may ask, why are these characterizations important? When you have something like a randomized lattice, typically what most orthopedic device designers expect is a poor size distribution value though this is what the industry typically uses as a baseline form of measurement, this is not a characteristic that is inherent to all lattice structures. If a pore size can be described as the approximate distribution of sizes for the voids within the lattice, it can be easy to use this characterization type for a Voronoi-based randomized lattice, but it is much less applicable to a TPMS lattice like a gyroid, or an ordered lattice like a face-centered cubic. If you were to look at these different structures, it's not immediately clear where a pore may begin and where a pore may end. So building a functional comparison between a randomized lattice and something like a gyroid lattice is not really a simple task at the digital level. However, what can be used instead are more general lattice characterizations such as relative density, such as surface area to volume ratio. These characterizations can be accurately determined across any lattice structure made in topology, so it is possible for a user to easily build functional comparisons between completely different lattice structures and get some baseline understanding of how their osseointegrated performance may compare. Now something that is always good to take a peek at is the lattice that has been created on your actual orthopedic device.
For a design like this acetabular cup, the lattice design region is actually quite thin. In this case, it's only a millimeter in thickness. Even though the lattice may be initially considered and measured in a bulk, homogeneous region like a large cube, it may be possible for the lattice design region on the actual device to be so thin that there is not enough space for the lattice to respond homogeneously. So, a good sanity check to perform while exploring different input lattice parameters is to check your characterizations, like relative density, like surface area to volume ratio, against an equivalent lattice inside of a solid cube. If these numbers are within range of each other, as we can currently see that they are, it can help you as a device designer to have a little bit more faith that the osseo integrative lattice structure on the implant will perform more expectedly. Now we did discuss what the definition of a pore size is, and how it can be used to describe a randomized lattice. As some of you may know, Entopology is in the process of developing a whole new way to create lattice structures within the software through what we call a lattice body data type. With this lattice body workflow, we enable additional features such as modifiable cell maps, custom unit cells, and even properties such as a measurable pore size. Previously, the pore size value we call out when generating a randomized lattice structure is a pore size that we are attempting to create and get to. However, with this new lattice body workflow, we can actually grab the measured distribution of pore sizes for a randomized lattice. So there's no longer going to be a guessing process between what your input value is and what actually is being created. Using this pore size data, we can represent it as a point map. where we can get a visual understanding of what the distribution looks like, as well as perform some analysis on the data set. So we can get an average of the pore size, as well as a standard deviation value from that average. In addition, we can even use that point map to create representative spheres that will allow us to visualize the pores themselves and what is actually being measured. Now, of course, the disclaimer here is that the pore size measurements are still very much a beta functionality. It is very possible that some or all of these functionalities may change before they become officially released in the software, but we do want our medical device users to know that we are always listening to feedback and very much have considerations like validation criteria at the forefront of our minds. From design to output, Entopology offers not just a variety of ways to control aspects of your osseointegrative lattice design process, but also a variety of ways to control where and how the design process is applied. Obviously, what I've shown here today is not intended as a be-all and end-all solution when it comes to characterizing osseointegrative lattices for your medical devices. There are many ways to go about this within Entopology, and this is merely an example on how to use our pre-existing osseointegrative structures toolkit to hit the ground running with Entopology.